Catholicism. Tell block. us, tell us all. Pretty big one. One of the one of the greats. Yes, the greatest block. <laughs> See, here's the thing. Here's the thing with people my age and your age. I think we're yep. both going You know, the truth about Catholicism got uncovered when my teenage brain was forming. Right. So somebody older, a little bit older, or even a little bit younger, doesn't. I was born at the right time to be like Catholic, like you really, if you're my age, you really got to fuck with religion to really kind of be proud to be a Catholic. Because when I was 15 is when the news broke that they're raping all the kids. Yep. And that the power and corruption goes deeper than you could ever imagine. And not only are they raping the kids, but then the priests and the powers that be all the way up to the Pope, most likely, is protecting the pedophiles in the church. And now you're saying, and now I'm like, uh-oh, SpaghettiO. <laughs> I didn't know that because my mom, very religious, even my father, very religious. And Catholicism, it was so ingrained in me. Here's how much Catholicism was ingrained in me. Number one, I have Catholic tattoos all over my body still. Great. Like a Catholic cross, Catholic scripture. I mean, literally, if I take my shirt off, it's like I'm fighting for the army of God. Like it's, you think I'm in Mystic River? Like I am a Boston Catholic, even though I'm from New York. And so and German and German. Yeah. <laughs> and not in any way Italian. Yeah. So, it, yeah. Yeah. There was a point where things got so bad for the Catholics. I was like, I'd rather be a Nazi than a Catholic. <laughs> like, like I was prouder of that. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, growing up, you know, like with, with, with all this Catholicism, kind of the shift, uh, it was so ingrained in me, Catholic school, Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school, Catholic college. Okay. I grew up in New York, Brooklyn, New York. I did not meet my first Jewish person until I was 23 years old when I entered graduate school for physical therapy, graduate school, 23 years old, I met my first Jewish person. Shout out Dana, great kid. That was the first Jewish person I ever befriended in my life because I was so, in, it was like, I was so Catholic. I was like the Hasidic Jew of Catholicism. Like it was, my block was Catholic. Everything was about the church. Everything was Catholic, 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 Catholic. And it's been this major block for me because what is Catholic, at the core of it, Catholicism, I think a lot of the guilt, you know, people always say, you know, Catholic guilt, all that, that to me comes from, well, the main thing I think is all you hear in church and all you hear in Catholicism is pretty much whatever you do here on earth is going to dictate where you're placed in the afterlife. So if you don't go to church, if you masturbate, if you have premarital sex, if you commit any of these sins, then guess what? Your chance in heaven goes down, down, purgatory, hell. That's what's happening. And, you know, so that's where the guilt comes from. So I've been struggling with that, and I didn't realize how directly correlated that was with my anxiety and my kind of feelings towards myself, because I thought I could give money to, you know, growing up, I'd give money to a homeless person or do a good deed or do something, but if I didn't go to church on Sunday, I'm going to hell. And I, I could never get out of my own. You know what's also really funny? Yeah. As I listen to this, the rules are so unclear. Yes. Like... Do you know what a mortal sin? I still like so if I masturbate mm -hmm. and then confess, right. it does it count any? I, it was never clear to me. It was never clear like you're good, right? Well, for me too, like you know, the mortal sin versus the venial sin. Yes. That would be like a more venial sin. You know, it's masturbation, not that big. mortal sin is like killing, rape, those things, and those sins, mortal sins, but not raping little boys, right? Those kind. M mortal sins technically could only be absolved. I believe a mortal sin could only be absolved by a pope or a cardinal. You had to I, travel. I, I, yeah, you had to travel. Yeah, you, you had to you had to get a flight to Italy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta... which you know is tough. It was yeah. tough for the Catholics Back in my then? community. Yeah, dude, we were doing Fungwa bus lines to Boston. <laughs> so we were taking a three dollar Chinese bus ride to Boston. We're not. We don't have the money. Yeah, to go we don't got the money. We don't have a passport. What? How do we and do? And like, it? I remember, like, I remember being, I remember being about. 25 26 and going to the eastern state penitentiary uh in philadelphia it's you know visit great great thing to do if you're ever around what were you, what were you, why'd you go uh, because i just i love history so i wanted to go the eastern state penitentiary the reason why i went is it's one of the it's an old school quaker prison so the way they have it set up is you know they had the the guards in the middle and then you had these long hallways and those would be the prisoner cells so like quaker prison quaker style was like you, you, your penance is you sit in silence for the rest of your life. Like you do not have any interaction, which of course makes people go insane. But anyway, Al Capone had a cell there, right? And I wasn't even thinking about Catholicism then, whatever. We're on the tour and 
were going down and they said, oh, this is Al Capone cell, whatever. So they said, oh, he actually uh, began to get like really sick here. And I don't know that he died in that prison, but he died shortly after him leaving that prison. And they said, but it was on this bed right here where the priest absolved him of all his sins. And therefore, you know, he was a devout Catholic towards the end of his life. So he was absolved of his sins and crimes and, you know, believed he was going to heaven. And I was like, what a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. 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 First of all, paid off the priest, sure. But I was like, what a bunch of, what a bullshit type of religion then if this guy who killed so many people, murdered people, ruined families, is now just because at the end of his life he had enough money or enough cachet, was famous enough to get a high-ranking priest to absolve him of his sins, now he goes to heaven, but I might go to hell because I'm jerking off and having premarital sex because I love Puerto Rican women and I'm horny. Hello. Hello. And I'm battling my sexuality. So yeah, have I, you know, fucking maybe gone too close with a guy? Sure. You're, hey, who's winning, by the way? You versus your sexuality. Uh, so far, right now it's right now it's me, but we are wavering. <laughs> where uh, it's one of those things where when I hit forty, if I'm lucky enough to hit forty, there might just be a thing where I'm like, listen, I got to be honest with you. The most fun I've had. I don't know if, if you haven't seen the show. Please Google it. Season one of White Lotus. The, I don't, did you see White Lotus? I've seen episode one. Okay, so the first season of White Lotus, the the best character is this Australian gay guy. Yeah, and the, I'm like, the manager. That's the guy I want to be. That's that's the guy who's like, that. I love that guy. And it's like, what is that guy doing? He's just being gay. He's yeah. just having fun. Yep. You know, I'm like, and I, I found myself identifying with that guy. I was like, I don't know that I can eat a guy's ass over a table, which is one of the scenes. But I'm like, you know what, dude? Can you? I can be gay without hooking up with a guy. I mean, in, ta in terms of a, uh, like culturally having a blast. Yeah. No one's having more fun. Dude, I got to be honest with you. As I'm getting older, I don't know if it's my blood pressure medicine. Shout out Losardin. I don't know if it's that, but. Do you have a promo code for Losardin? I wish I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, not yet. Um, I, I don't, not that I don't need sex. I mean, it's a human need. Sure. But I've been so much less horny and like, I, I, I'm okay having sex with Jasmine once a week, once every two. It's not that big a deal if we have sex or don't have sex. And even when I'm on the road, like that whole idea of like, ooh, we're in the road. I want to jerk off 10 times. Or I want to try to get a girl after the show. None of that happens. I'm like, no, I'd rather, I've done it enough in my life now. It's like, I'd rather just go hang out with the feature, go get something nice to eat right after the show, chill out, maybe not even add a show, just be done by nine o'clock, go enjoy a city be back in the hotel room by 11 and just that's fine because the stress and anxiety comes with the chase of the women comes with the trying to validate your feelings and validate your security as a man by being a, on the prowl sexually. I'm like, I don't want that. It's maybe the dumbest scoring system imaginable. Yeah. And it's the only, it's not the only, it's like, it's just a way guys keep score. Right. And it's so destructive. Yeah, and I blame, and I'm bringing it all back to you because I blame a lot of that on Catholicism. I really do. And I blame a lot of all that on my, you know, me being told I need to go to an all-boy Catholic school, me being told that premarital sex is wrong, me being told all those things, that masturbation is wrong. That, and it creates a pressure that you feel like can only be resolved by yeah, sex with a woman. Yeah, by sex with a woman, by, by, by being a bad boy and having premarital sex, by, right. you know, um, doing all these things that you're not. Well, no, it's funny because I'm, 12 years Catholic school. Yep. What it sex would be like without that, without that thing of like, this is bad. Yeah. Even if it's cause I'm like far from it now, but it's right. still the right. frame is there. Do you, you're not a practicing Catholic no. anymore. Yeah. So we're similar in that where, yeah. where I even like, you know, I was an atheist. Now I'm not like, but I don't believe in Catholic yeah. God. Like I'm like, that got, seems silly, but I got both my daughters baptized only because get baptized into the Catholic faith. This way, if you want to make a decision as you get older, my girls, if they want to, and they want to get the rest of the sacraments, communion, confirmation, all that, they can do that. I, this way they're baptized. I, I just didn't want my kids to like want to be Catholic because I wouldn't stop them from that and then be you know 25 years old having to get dunked in a tank. So I was like, let them just do that as kids, but no communion for my older one, no penance, none of these sacraments. And it's caused a bit of an issue with my family who are still devout Catholics. And I'm like, you guys got to understand, my I make sure my daughters have relationships with God and spirituality, and I meditate with my seven year old and things, and we're just doing things a little different. I'm never going to pressure her. She can choose whatever religion she wants because I had Catholicism pounded down my throat, yeah. and I don't know that it 
did any good for me. And I didn't have a choice and I didn't learn about other religions and I was very insulated. And, you know, it was a blessing to be able to come and start to get into comedy and meet all these different types of people. And when I was, you know, 25, 26 in the West Village. How I, many Jews have you met by now? Um, since Dana. Since Dana. Now I've met, well, I, Dana, there's Sam Morrill and Ari Shafir. So Great. three. Yeah. <laughs> And you, I thought you and Schultz were Jews, but you're not. <laughs> uh, but so, so I'll say three and a half. Um, but, but so Catholicism has been a major block for me because I feel like there is not, something good about structure in a religion. And you, I do, I will say like, it's not a bad moral structure. Right. In like the, the, the basics of it, like right. the golden rule. Could right. have just told me the golden rule. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but the rest, just the, the bylaws and the thing, and then venial and mortal, and you're going here yeah. and they, that's full. And you're going, you're going to a different place yeah. into hell. And it's like, okay. Cause in a way, right. What is church? Church is meditation. That's what you're doing. Like when you're meditating, you're kind of getting a connection to a, your spirit and all that stuff. And it's great, but it's like, so you're saying if I don't do that Sunday, every Sunday, then in your system, I lose points and I go to hell. That's and also you want to burn me? Yeah. Yeah, what? You want to burn me because I didn't go to fucking a, a building? Yeah, it's and listen to a ceremony that I by the time I it yeah. was just wrote and I could say da 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 da. I knew it. I'd had it memory. I'm mouthing along in yeah. the audience. Yeah, but you want to burn me? Yeah, I'm gonna get burned. But Al Capone's in heaven with a Tommy gun. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks hey did you like that did you like that yeah did you like it though you want more don't want to work would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people first of all go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh watch more clips this is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in I'm a little i'm not really used to the green